welcome. Welcome, Albert, Tony. Thank you for joining us on time. I see that some scholars are asking for the link to join. So I'm going to post that in our WhatsApp group right now. But thank you for being here. So we are going to begin in just about a minute. I am going to help some of our other scholars join the webinar. Um, we have both of our panelists with us today and our moderator is with us, all from the West Coast of Africa. So we are glad to, to be introducing you to them very shortly. Okay. Okay, so let us begin. Welcome to our third webinar of personal finance. We are very excited to welcome our two guest speakers who are both professionals in the financial industry um, for this webinar focusing on an introduction to insurance and also investment opportunities. I'm going to pass it over to WMI Global Advisory Board member Success from Nigeria, and she will introduce our two guest speakers today. Okay. Um, good afternoon from here. My name is Success Jujin, and I'm a WMI Global Advisory Board member, a student scholar from Nigeria, and I want to welcome you all to this interesting webinar. So I, today we have two panelists with us, and we'll be listening to them. They have a lot to tell us on, on the, the topic of today. The first person is Henry. Henry is an experienced financial engineer with a demonstrated history of working in the financial services industry. He's also a strong finance professional with a doctor of philosophy, a PhD, focused on statistics from the University of Ghana. Um, Henry Obengtaiwa also studied um, mathematics. He has a master's in mathematics and applied mathematics with a specialization in financial engineering from the Maladin University in Sweden <laughs> and a Bachelor of Science Statistics from the University of Cape Coast. And also the next um, panelist we have is also Mr. Thomas Savotsi. Mr. St Thomas Savotsi is a member of the Global Advisory Board member, and he is a chartered accountant from the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. He graduated from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology with a BSc in the Business Administration Accounting. Currently, he's the finance manager of Asante Kotoko Sporting Club based in Kumasi. Thomas, until his current appointment, was the CEO of Vasco Consults Limited, which provides services in audits, business planning, and financial management. Thomas has been engaged as a financial analyst for Global Specialty Oils and Parts Limited, an edible oil refinery in Tema, investment manager at the Strategic Hedge capital and audit assistant at the GMC Consulting Limited. That's a very 
great <laughs> bio. <laughs> so um, you're, you're very much welcome, Henry and Thomas. You're very welcome to this uh, webinar, and we really hope for a very engaging session. Also, for the participants, please, you can make this more engaging by dropping your questions in the Q&A session. If you can look below your screen, you just see right down there, so you can drop it at the Q&A session. And then at the end of the webinar, or during the course of the webinar, we'll go to your questions. Once again, you're very much welcome. And I am um, very happy to be here with you. And I'm also looking forward to learning a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Success for the great introduction. Uh, You're welcome, Henry. So, Thomas, should you, would you like to go first or I should start? Okay, let me just take the... Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hope it's on. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, uh, okay, Henry will be taking the we'll go first by taking the investment. An introduction to investments but by the end of uh, today's session we want to achieve three main goals which are identifying investment products and their basic characteristics know the benefits and risks of different investments as a young person and also recognize what insurance options are relevant and to mitigate current risk thank you so henry you can you can go on Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, maybe uh, I might be doing some other, saying some other stuffs which are not so um, directly linked to the, the slides that uh, Thomas had, had shared on the screen. But uh, to begin with, I mean, when we say uh, we want to invest, investment is uh, simply putting something of value, placing something of value now to actually see it work or grow so that we can have benefits of it in the future. We have so many investments in the world right now. People invest in so many things. People invest in property. People invest in uh, bonds. People invest in stocks and people always in, even people invest in their education and some even in our local places, people invest in their children. They, take, they make sure their children go to good schools and all that. When you ask them, some of them, their reason is that their children will grow and come and take care of them, which is all kind of investing. So it's simply about putting an asset down and placing it somewhere good and watching it grow and reaping its uh, benefits in the future but uh, this time around we want to know how to do basic investing that is how we can keep it simple in this lecture we would uh, like to introduce you to the basic characteristics of investments so that you can decide which investments make sense for your financial goals in addition we can learn the names of the various investments and their basic features and we'll try and expose you to a way of thinking about the investments that fits within the life, the life cycle framework. Now, when you want to invest, the first thing that has to come to your mind is to keep it very simple. Keeping it simple. There is no need to rush and do any complex investments or invest in stuffs or assets that you don't understand. So for basic investment, keeping it simple is the key. And the first key thing that you have to cons consider, that is the feature, is the liquidity of the investment. 
let's say you have a checking account so that you can write a check immediately and turn your investment into cash. We have liquid assets are good, but they can provide immediate resources to cover a health emergency. Spending during a period of unemployment or payment for an unexpected home repair. Now, one drawback that we have in doing investment keeping is when you don't keep it simple, in terms of maybe emergency, when something comes up, sometimes you'll be in an immediate need for cash. So if you have any complex investments, it's like you are going to be in hot waters, as we say in this country. You now need to go and have fine people begging money and all those, but that is what, not what we want to have now. So we need to have assets, invest in assets that are very liquid. But even having liquid assets, I think uh, we sometimes have a little bit of disadvantages of having liquid assets to you. Just like, as I said, when you have access to liquid assets, it's like um, they create the temptation. It's like when you don't have cash on hand, you are tempted to spend the money on maybe vacation or maybe something that you fancy. But once money starts building up, in your checking account, which is an investment, but a liquid asset, it is difficult to say no to things that we can now afford. So what I can say is that to start basic investments, uh, uh, the two has to be balanced in terms of liquidity. You see, maybe you can invest in the, um, something that maybe the temptation would not be too much for you or too easy for you to get access to, or when you have in that need of money, the investment too shouldn't be too hard for you to assess. Now, in keeping it simple, the second point that we have to consider about the investment is the kind of investment, that is the risk. Most people don't like the uncertainty of risk. That's why stock investors historically have a higher rate of return on their investments. Their payout is more variable, which means that when they go to spend the money they invest in, invested, it could be a lot or a little. Now, when we talk about risk associated to your money, Remember, we are keeping everything simple. That's basic, so we are keeping everything simple. So when we talk about risk, your risk associated to your investment in simple terms is how you can easily lose your investment or even not losing your investment, how well the investment will react to our environment and affect its performance. For instance, when somebody invests in, in stocks, the person is investing in other people's companies through shares. They are indirectly giving their monies to companies to work with their monies for them. They don't have um, direct access in managing the day-to-day -day activities of the company. So how are they going to make sure that their company is well catered for, hey, sorry, their monies are well catered for, and the monies that they've invested brings them the expected returns that they are willing to, to get. So in, in this case, because they don't have much access to their money, the risk there is quite high. But where the risks are high, the results or the rewards are also sometimes high. Now, when we invest, we have to ask ourselves, are we risk tolerant? Can we tolerate the kind of risk 
that we are putting our monies into. A risk tolerance investor is willing to accept a 50% chance of spending less or spending more. A risk adverse takes a certain chance that the risk trade-off is all about risky, risky investments aren't for everyone. They need to be able to accept the volatility of you going to take the investment risk. So at this moment, in keeping it simple, you have to define your risk tolerance and your risk tolerance will should tell you that how can I take the shock of the results of what I am going to put my monies into? Am I going to put my money at the right place? Am I going to have the right returns that I'm trying to make in future in my retirement? The monies that I am trying to save, will I get the exact monies for my retirement? Now, this brings us down to know the type of investments that we have to, we have to do for the purpose of which we are doing the investment. Somebody might be saving for a retirement. Somebody might be saving for his education. Somebody might be saving even for a vacation. So when you are keeping it simple in investing in such areas, where do you think somebody would have less risk or put his money there when he's investing uh, his money for the future? For example, let's say retirement. When somebody is uh, saving money for retirement, you can't actually compare that investment to somebody who is saving for a vacation or somebody who is saving to maybe purchase a property. Those risks are different. So in basic investments and keeping it simple, to have just a little recap, we have to check our liquidity, we have to check our risk. And the last point that I'm going to talk about in investing and keeping it simple is diversification. As the saying goes, we don't put all your eggs in one basket. And even in advanced investment, when there is a pop-up or a call to invest in a certain stock of a company, you don't put everything there in case the company collapses. Normally what is done is that you have to look for a range or an array of stocks. Analysis is done, a professional will see to it and advise you on how many stocks and how to uh, proportion your money to the various stocks that you are going to buy. You would want to hold a mix of assets in your portfolio that is well diversified. By combining assets, you can reduce I mean, by combining the assets, you can reduce the overall volatility of your investment portfolio. That is, with diversification, you can minimize the risk of losing your money and even get on rid of uncertain amounts or unnecessary up and downs when you are probably investing in the stock markets or even in the bond market. Most often, people think that the bonds markets are so safe. Yes, they are safe, but you have to know that there are some factors can even affect bond markets and their appreciation, such as factors such as inflation and other economic, I mean, figures can just disrupt you and just take you out of place. So when you are keeping it simple and in investing, to have these three in, things in mind, you have to check your liquidity, your risk appetite, and the diversification of your investment. But what we have to take in mind is that no amount of diversification is going to get rid of the risk in the overall market. This type of market captures only the risk that we know as the systemic risk. 
because the economy swings back and forth between recession and expansion, that risk can't be checked or that risk can't be, I mean, taken, I mean, I mean, it can't be checked. It can't be checked. Well, um, I want to end this session of the keeping it simple in basic investing um, by just having a few summary for you. So one, you don't need a complicated investment portfolio. There are, I mean, more hardworking people and there are more intelligent people who are there to guide you. Thomas is one of them. So if you have any problems or challenges in investing, and you can contact a professional and the professional will provide you with all information and all the guide. It is very, very important and it is very, very necessary to see a professional's advice for a professional to guide you when you are beginning in investing in any portfolio or doing any investment. Um, in this part of our world, normally we don't normally seek professional counsel before we start investing in any assets. But it is very, 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 very crucial for you to be able to beat the markets, for you to be able to put your monies at the right place and at the right time. And if you sometimes the professional can even guide you so that you can exit all your investments at a particular time so that certain risk and economic factors don't affect you so much in your business. They give you a well diversified mix of portfolios so that you don't make unnecessary mistakes in the future. Money is hard to come by and money is hard end. So when you are starting in any form of investment, kindly keep in mind that we have to keep it simple, check our liquidity, our risk, and our, our diversification. And to crown it all, let's seek the professional's advice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sherry. Thank you very much. I really understood what you said about keeping it simple. Um, before the questions start trickling in, um, Sir Thomas, please, can you take over from where he stopped? Yes, Mr. Thomas Silverstein. Okay. Okay, so uh, Harry, Harry has uh, uh, talked and then has educated us so much on the investments. So uh, I'll go on with the, the next topic, which is managing risk. And I'm sure he also uh, talked about uh, risk management in investment. In fact, they are, they are uh, related. So then uh, let's look at what insurance is. I mean, insurance is a specialized area. And uh, it is very important for, it's very important for us to understand as young people, as graduate scholars, as uh, even students call us the the more we understand the better we are we are informed so you no know, insurance basically is a contract and uh, that in that contract we have a policy that guides the two parties and in that contract it means that one party undertakes to provide a guarantee or a compensation for a specified loss, a damage, illness, or even in death, in return for a payment of a specified premium. Okay. Now, what that means is that an entity which provides insurance is known as the insurer. Now, we will look at certain key terms in there. And, uh, and the person who is buying the insurance is known as the insured 
or the policy <coughs> holder. Now, insurance transactions involves the insured assuming that the guaranteed relatively small loss in the form of payments to the insurer in exchange for the insurance promise to compensate the insured in the event of covered loss. Okay. Now, what, what this means is that, okay, uh, you cannot estimate what will happen in the future. So maybe if uh, you are having a car or personally, uh, you cannot determine when you'll be, you'll be sick. So then you are planning and then uh, making sure that you, you, are, you are ready in the uh, event that, that that risk actually happens. Now, what, what people normally uh, do is that they don't want to take up the, they don't want to take up the, the insurance policy because, because if they do, and then the period elapses and then the thing does not happen, it means they've lost. But you have to also look at the other way around where you don't take it up and then the, the, the risk actually happens, okay? Sometimes premium payments are about maybe 1%, 1.5% of the uh, amount insured. And then because it's, it's a specialized area, there are people we call the, uh, what, what was the name? Actual, uh, uh, they study actuarial science. And they are able to look at the, the risk level of, what, of the asset or whatever you want to insure and then be able to place the premium you, you'll be paying, okay? So it is good at this stage, we, we encourage people to undertake insurance policies to mitigate against any future risk, okay? Now, one will ask that what is risk? Risk is the possibility that something valuable you own suddenly be worth much less. Our most valuable asset is our most valuable asset is our stocks and our ability to make income. You see? So you could take some uh, some somebody like a footballer. Okay. Your whole income depends on your on your on your body, especially your, your legs. So what do you do? You invest and then you make sure that you always have a healthy body play always because the moment you, you you break your leg that is the end of your career and that is why we always encourage some some of these people that look you you make here was the was the sunshine you make a lot of investments you make a lot of insurance because uh like henry said when he was uh, uh, doing investment the higher the risk the the higher the return, okay? So that risk, for instance, is about uh, breaking your leg. If you, are, if you are somebody working in the mines, okay, your risk level is high. And that is why your return you are getting from there is also high, okay? So we say that if you lose our ability to make income, you've suffered a devastating loss, yes. Or we will learn, now we will learn about insurance and risk management in this session. Okay, so like I said, we can, we can look at certain, about six examples of insurance policies you can think of. One is the public health insurance, okay? Those are ones that are initiated by our governments. They, they sometimes demand certain premium for, from us, and also as government, they have other sources of income that they can put through so that they can uh, allow public hospitals to provide health, uh, health services to you when what you have insured against uh, actually happens to you. And then you should note that it's not every sickness or every ailment that are covered in these policies. And therefore, you should be able to know uh, what actually is covered in the policy. We will be looking at certain hidden terms in uh, insurance, but then let's, let's always uh, be mindful to be able to understand whatever policies we are engaged in. 
Now the next thing is the private health insurance. Apart from public health insurances, there are other private uh, institutions that take up these uh, health insurances and providing similar uh, services. You should know that it's not a government or the public cannot do it all. And sometimes some of these public health uh, insurances are more effective and then efficient than the public ones. Then also, we have educational plan policies. Some of these educational plan policy, uh, uh, insurance policies are investment banks. What, what uh, uh, an, an educational insurance policy meant to be uh, investment bank is that, okay, so you can be paying the insurance premium. Maybe you do it for three years, okay? Uh, if the risks are against which you are doing the policy does not happen, you can get a cash back of maybe 100% or whatever. What it means is that those money that you are paying for, they are using for investment. So at the end of the period, if uh, you don't claim the uh, uh, damages, uh, they have already made some uh, profit on that investment. So you share it with the insurance uh, policy. In fact, if you don't understand anything, you can put out a question and then we can address it later on. You can also have a vehicle insurance. Yes, you don't know what time your, your car can crash. Either uh, a third party insurance or comprehensive. Now, third party means that, okay, uh, the, the other person that you have used the car to hit or the other car that you have damaged, the insurance policy covers that. If it's a comprehensive insurance, yourself in the car, the car, and then the other party must be covered by this insurance. Home insurance. Okay, home insurance, you don't know when you, if uh, the robbers will attack you or there will be a, a burglary or there will be fire. Okay. So when you do this and then uh, in the unlikely event that it happens, you fall on the insurance company to uh, provide you with relief. Then also we have travel insurance. Um, people traveling from their country to another country needs to take up travel insurance so that if anything happens on their way, the insurance company will, will, will compensate you, okay? Certain, sometimes it depends, certain airlines will make it compulsory or certain uh, traveling uh, opportunities will, will ask for it. Some can make it optional at your own discretion. I will encourage you if you are traveling to take up uh, travel insurance. Uh, okay, so for the few ones, uh, Sosa, do you have any questions so far? to address. Um, okay, like right now, there's no question in the question box, but when there is, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. So let's look at some, uh, okay. let's look at some terms in insurance. So we say life insurance policy, okay? So anytime you, you see something about life insurance, it's about human life, okay? Human life, or sometimes it's also referred to as the life assurance policy, okay? So we say that they guarantee payment of a stated death benefits if the covered person dies during the specified time, okay? Then now, if you talk about premium, the premium is the amount you pay to keep the life insurance plan active and enjoy continued coverage. Okay. So as we are saying that the uh, insurance is a, is, a, is a contract between two parties, okay, the, insure, the, the company giving the insurance will, will expect that you, the person who is taking the policy, pays premium. That is your consideration. Okay. So we so said that there are various options of how to, you can pay premium. You can do regular payments, you can do limited payments, or just a single uh, uh, payment, depending on how you, you want to do it. And then also, 
we have uh, the sum assured. So we are saying that the financial loss that may arise due to the passing away of the life assured is generally referred to as the sum assured, okay? In technical terms, sum assured is the term used for an amount that is that the insurer agrees to pay on death of the insurance person or assurance of any other insured event. Okay, so let me explain this. So if you do a life insurance and then you, you uh, agree that the sum assured is say 10,000 Dana CDs, upon which you are making a monthly uh, premium of say uh, 500 Ghana CDs every month, that means that in the event that the, the risks actually occurred, the total amount you are receiving is the 10,000 Ghana CDs. Another example, if you have uh, insured your car, and, uh, and then you say that your sum assured is say 30,000 Ghana CDs, and then you pay maybe an annual uh, premium of say 2,000 Ghana CDs, what it means is that if the, the, the risk against which the car was insured, say accident, okay, and then the car actually gets accident and the insurance company comes to do the assessment and their due diligence and then they are uh, convinced, you see, the total amount of the uh, compensation you are getting is the 30,000 Ghana cities, not more. And what it also means is that there is one thing I didn't bring, we call it subrogation. Subrogation means that you, the insurance policy holder, should not, should not, you shouldn't cheat the, 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 the company, okay? So they can assess, are we going to repair the car for you to, to reinstate it into each state, or they take the old car and then replace it with you for a new car that is worth the 30,000, okay? Now, we also have insured. So now the insured is you the person whose risk of financial loss from an insured peril, or who you call the policy holder, okay? Then you have the insurer, who is the insurance company. We have third party insurance. So third party insurance is protection of the insured against liability for damage or the destruction of the bodies of property or, or property of others. Now, Apart from third party insurance, you also have comprehensive insurance, which reimburses you for damage to your own car from causes of order than collision or overturning. You see? So these are certain clauses that are in that you need to look at and be sure that if that risk actually occurs, you will be entitled to the uh, sum assured. The next thing we have is utmost good faith or what the lawyers will say, or barima fidat. Now, he said this is the duty of both the insurance and the policy holder, you, to act honestly towards each other. You should voluntarily disclose accurately and fully all relevant information to the risks being insured. Okay. So for instance, the car or the house being insured, whether requested or not. So all that we are looking out for, or the company, is saying is that with utmost good faith in insurance, you need to be truthful, okay? Don't hide any information because if you don't disclose it now and then the risk actually okay, and then the company gets to know, you will lose that, uh, that compensation you wish for. Okay. So I said, do you still have some questions? No, okay. No, I do not have one now. Okay. So there is another key area we, we want you to uh, look at and then be very conversant with. Okay. Is that hidden terms in insurance? Why hidden terms in insurance? Uh, often, often than not, uh, people say that some of the terms in the insurance policy and even in loan contracts, okay, they are written in small uh, font sizes, okay? I think some people will term it at the fine print so that they will give you, they will not give you the opportunity to read through word by word. But then 
they might have certain terms in there that will, will not be favorable to you. Okay. What it means is that you are at liberty to uh, negotiate the terms in an insurance contract. It's not that you pay, they give you a paper, a piece of paper you sign. No, you need to agree with the company that is taking up the insurance before you, you sign. Okay. So for, for each of major insurance plan types, you find below certain common hidden clauses. This is not to say that every insurance policy contains these clauses with absolute certainty, but most definitely do. Okay. So for instance, most life insurance plans have a minimum coverage term of five years or more. You see? So that means that if you are not uh, critical about it, the life insurance policy you are, you are signing on to is, is for a term of five years or more. But you will pay in about two years and then want a, a, a refund or a cashback investment. And they will tell you that, no, you cannot do that. Even if you do maybe four and a half, it means you have lost all, all, all that. Okay? So you need to know that the minimum coverage term is this period. And then you are comfortable doing that uh, long period that they are providing. Now, the second thing is premium are usually fixed regardless of your age and health yes so uh you need to agree on the premiums and then know that your inflows and money can be able to uh, support what you want to do okay now uh, some other rights that put it as this the suicide clause if the cause of the death is suicide the policy will wedding usually detect that the policy is void you see so you cannot do a life insurance and then say that you you die through suicide and then that and just a minute sorry okay deductibles this is the fraction of the total claimable amount that you have to pay before the insurer makes any payout. Make sure you, you understand these terms. Most travel insurance policies do not cover baggage or belongings which you do not physically bring with you on the trip. Yes. So when you are doing a life insurance policy, uh, find out what, what it says about the, the luggages or the baggage you are bringing to uh, you are bringing on board baggage loss due to war or similar situations is usually not covered yes this this is termed as a force major they are something beyond the control of the insurance policy and they will not be insured travel insurance does not necessarily cover adventurous activities such as scuba diving or parachuting if you plan to carry to carrying out these types of activities, make sure they are included. See, if you don't have such plans, there's no need to buy a policy with included adventurous activities as it most likely be pricier. Yes. So what, what, is, what we want to say is that don't just take insurance policy for taking sake. Okay. You should be sure that there is a likelihood of you incurring that risk. And for that matter, you want to commit uh, money or resources to, to that. Okay, so uh, we have some takeaways for, for, for you here. We are saying that uh, from uh, Henry's presentation, understand basic investment products such as treasury bills, fixed deposits, mutual funds, shares, mortgage as a means of acquiring large investments. Yes, then we we have explained that there are several insurance policies that one can make. Yeah. And insurance are good, only that you need to understand your need and then uh, the risks that are associated with what you want to do. Is it personal? Is it about property? Is it about car? Is it about traveling? And then know uh, what is best for you. 
and then you can start a business with little or no cash okay and then also we are saying that you thoroughly read through insurance terms before appending your signature okay okay um process you can take it out from there All right. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, there's a question here from a scholar. Okay. It says, where do we look for insurance policies in our country and how do we buy them? Okay. Thank you. Um, you see, every country has uh, insurance companies. For, for Ghana, uh, there are several insurance companies now uh the regulations in ghana is that is either you do life assurance or the uh, other types of uh, insurance okay you have to separate them okay so there are companies that are licensed by the regulator to undertake ins insurance and they have agents and then salespersons that goes around to to sell their products or insurance uh, services okay in ghana we have the national insurance commission that is the uh, body uh, mandated to regulate the insurance uh, insurance industry in ghana okay it will be the same for other uh, countries as well and make sure that these companies you are dealing with have a certificate or authority from the the, the national uh, insurance commission or the national insurance uh, 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 regulator to to undertake some of this uh, insurance what it means is that when it is licensed whatever policy that you do with them individually National Insurance Commission is aware, and then if there is anything, we can we can help you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Thomas. Um, the next question says, mm, "What is the average cost of a car insurance each month? Like basically the average cost. Maybe you can put it to the current, let's say the U.S. dollar, so that everybody will be able to get a good calculation." Okay. of the car insurance okay thank you very much i'll be i'll be um i'll be truthful here that i don't have a personal car so i don't want to comment on uh, a vehicle insurance but thankfully okay. uh, dr henry has a car and i think uh, he will best answer <laughs> for us all right Okay, Henry, please. <laughs> Would you want to answer this question? Says, what is the average cost of a car insurance each month? Yes. Um, actually, it's 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 various. You see, it uh, it depends on the the kind of policy that you want. Whether you want a comprehensive uh, insurance or you want a, a third party insurance, for instance. When you want a comprehensive insurance, insurance normally uh, you pay a certain percentage of the price that you quote to the person, uh, the insuring, uh, uh, the, the agent who is working the, the insurance for you. Normally, maybe let's say the car costs um, $2,000. And maybe you tell you that, okay, if you want full insurance, then you have to pay maybe 15% of that insurance, 15% uh, of the cost of the car for you to get uh, a full and a comprehensive insurance. Normally, the third party insurance are fixed, uh, uh, which uh, depends on the type of vehicle that you are using. Maybe you are using a saloon car somebody is using a cross country, somebody is using an SUV. So normally it's, uh, it varies within country to country. Uh, in, uh, in Ghana, for instance, when you insure 
let's see, a saloon car. Uh, it cost about a uh, hundred and uh, let's see, 45 CDs. Uh, I don't know how much it is in the dollars, but uh, Thomas, how much is it? 145 Ghana CDs. 145, you're talking about uh, maximum $30. Yes, that's $30. Thirty dollars. That's if you want a third party insurance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So, in effect, so in effect, third party insurance is cheaper than comprehensive insurance, and then also uh, the cost of the insurance will depend on uh, the maybe is it new the value of the of the vehicle will, will also determine that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, this question is for Henry. Said, I want to invest as a new graduate from the university. Do I have options that only require a small monthly contribution or do I necessarily have to invest in stocks? And, uh... Yes. Okay. If you, uh, the first thing that you have to identify is what you want to invest uh, uh, the projects you want to do when uh, at the end of your investment period. That is the first thing that you have to determine. So when you, able, you are able to determine that, okay, maybe uh, as a fresh graduate, maybe in six or seven years time, I want to uh, maybe continue with maybe my master's degree or my a PhD degree or something. So you have to find at least uh, what uh, the amount of money that you, you need to pursue that dream. So when you get the amount of money you would need in the future, that is what it will exactly um, inform you as to the money you have to start investing now. So probably if uh, in future you need about maybe $30,000 to to invest in your education in future, what you have to assess your current income right now, and uh, you have to use what we call annuities to work on the amount of money that you have to be saving each month for you to achieve that goal in, in future. For instance, if it costs $30,000 in future, maybe you can work on an annuity and it can tell you that, okay, maybe you need to save maybe at least 20% of your current income at this rate for a period of this, uh, at a certain period before you can achieve that 30,000 uh, goal in future. But um, notwithstanding, when you are able to determine this, these are subject to review. So maybe uh, as your income grows, you have to review the amount of money that you would have to save or maybe it might even be such that you have to even reduce the amount of money that you have to save towards that future goal. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Henry. Um, there's another question here. It says, if I want to learn about investing, how do you suggest I do this? Well, if you learn want, more. If you want to learn more, about investing, it's uh, it, it's it has to it has got to do with reading. You have to uh, take your time to read a lot of investment literature. That is one. You have to invest in the investment literature. So let's say, for instance, in the the newspaper, the business section, there are places where. Um, uh, companies bring uh, out investment uh, reports and uh, investment uh, updates and all that. You can be reading all those. Secondly, uh, you can also invest in channels that show investment uh, that are totally dedicated to investment, um, and, 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 and like the channels that are dedicated to investment and its related activities. For instance, we have a channel like uh, Bloomberg and uh, CNBC and CNN and all those. They have uh, sometimes they have uh, 
dedicated places who uh, where they actually teach people how to invest on the goings and comings of what is happening in our current states of investments. Well, with those ones, uh, they are kind of broad and uh, it uh, actually covers the whole of the world region. But maybe if you don't have access to that, you can localize yourself by reading your local newspapers, the investment section. There's a lot of information there that can help you to gain more knowledge in investments. Thank you very much so much. Okay, so, so to, add, to add to what uh, Henry has said, uh, mm -hmm. I think at the end of the session, we are going to share the, the slides and then also the write-up with you, which have a lot of uh, uh, links to setting uh, more information for you to get understanding. But investment is broad. And then uh, as, and it's part of life. Everybody must invest. So the, the earlier you start understanding investments, the better. And it will come more from personal experience, from experience. So is it doing uh, mutual fund investment or you want to take up fixed assets or treasury bills, okay? The, your personal experiences will be able to build you up and then give you very good reasons. But looking at these uh, channels and also the links and then learning more theoretically will also uh, beef you up. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. I, there's, there's this question again. Say, um, how do I deal with the drops in the market value of the portfolio that I'm investing in? Coming in. How do I deal with drops in the market value of the portfolio I'm investing in? I make an investment and the market value starts reducing. How do I deal with it? Okay. okay. Uh, the first thing that uh, you have to do is like, okay, it's like you getting uh, maybe ill. So immediately you have to speak to a professional. You see, the professional can explicitly advise you on what you have to do immediately. Sometimes uh, the portfolio that you have, it might be dropping for a reason of which it might come back and scale up and go and then and, and, and rise. So it is not that uh, immediately your portfolio starts dropping, you have to just uh, react to it and then change something. Uh, it's, uh, the professionals have the, I mean, the professional eyes to see what is actually happening. So if actually you have to disinvest in such a portfolio, they will tell you immediately, then you have to uh, uh, take time, heed to their counsel and, uh, and take to ask to whatever uh, they are they are, they are telling you. Sometimes too, uh, you can also react to your instincts, which uh, in instincts don't play so much role in investments. Uh, it is so much, uh, I mean, it is very risky. So basically you have to seek uh, the advice of the professional so that you can be helped out. Thank you very much. Um, the questions keep coming. The next one says, um, that's for you, Thomas. What is the most important insurance for a person to have, in your own opinion? Uh, I would say life insurance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say life okay. insurance because for, for me, for us, as young people, Whatever education we have acquired, whatever knowledge we have acquired, uh, we need a sound body to be able to execute. So the more you 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 invest in yourself and then make sure that every part of your body is working perfectly, then you can make enough revenue and make and then build the houses and buy the vehicles and then even make more and more investments. So I think like Life, life is more precious and important for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, we want to allow Zach, uh, a scholar, to, to speak right now. Zach, if you can unmute so we could hear you. 
Hello, Zach. Can you unmute, like, unmute your your mic so we could hear you? Okay. Okay, whenever he's ready. Um, the next question is, um, how do we employ tax and asset protection strategies for our portfolios? That's, I think that's to be for investment as well. How do we employ tax and protection strategies? How do you employ what tax protection strategies? Tax, yes, yes. Tax, tax protection strategies, you mean? Yes. Well, who wants to avoid the tax? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Tax and asset protection strategies, sorry. Mm -hmm. you, you said tax. That is T A X, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, some. Some assets, uh, when uh, some assets, when you invest in some assets, they are actually tax-free. Uh, some mutual funds in Ghana, I know, are tax-free. Some educational investments are. Okay. Hello, Harry. Hello, Harry. Still with us. Okay, let me let me take it out for him when he comes to okay. continue. Yes, right. like like uh, he's saying. Uh, hello, can you hear yeah, me? Hello, Harry. Yes, you can hear Welcome me. Welcome back. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I I I, I said that um, there are some investments which are uh, tax free. I mean, initially they will tell you that it's tax free and they will put it in the terms and the conditions. You might not have the time to read it, but actually when we are going. When your investment has matured and you are going for a draw out there, you see that you no, know, there are some hidden charges and there are some unnecessary tax. So what you can do is that if you want to protect yourself from the tax, then it means that the terms and conditions that you are given when you are investing should be very important to you. You should read them very, very carefully and make sure that you understand everything. If you don't understand, as I said, you always have to seek the counsel of a professional to explain everything to you. Um, asset protection too. Um, what you also need to do is that once you invest, you don't take your eyes off it. You have to always make sure that you follow the trends and you have to make sure that the investments that you are doing is actually performing. If it is not performing over a, a period of time and it is not going to actually yield the amount of money that you are supposed to get in the future when you need it, then immediately you have to advise yourself and change that asset and put it in some, somewhere where you can actually realize your, your gains at the end of the investing period. Oh, thank you very, thank much, you very like, much. Like Henry started, you see, uh, your government also needs uh, the taxes to develop, okay? But then in tax law, we have tax avoidance and tax evasion, okay? Now tax avoidance is legal, tax evasion is illegal. For instance, uh, in Ghana, because they want to encourage investment, uh, investment in treasury bills, in investment on the Ghana Stock Exchange returns from there, they don't attract uh, taxes, okay? So you need to look for this uh, uh, product. Now, secondly, what I want to talk on to is on uh, uh, what we call the, the, the pension funds. Now in Ghana, the law is saying that if, if you invest up to about 35% of your income in pension funds is not taxable okay so uh, for social security you have about 18.5 percent which is uh, compulsory now taking that law into consideration that means you have uh, about 16.5 percent additional that when you take out from your uh, uh, earnings at pension funds you are not going to be taxed, okay? So you can invest this in a provident fund that can give you more returns, okay? But many people do not know. So 
you, you just do the mandatory one, which is just 18 and five percent of your basic. And then you leave the remainder for the uh, for the tax authorities to 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 tax. So okay. you can look at these areas: tax tax avoidance, yes; tax evasion, no. Oh, okay. thank, thank you very very much, Thomas. Okay, um, right now we're about to round off because we've already gone ahead of our time but i just want to say also i want to add to all that our panelists have said that before you choose a portfolio you should tell your um, your portfolio should be tailored towards your lifestyle your surrounding circumstances and the risks that you can they are willing to allow and then before you make an insurance policy make sure that that's the one that's good for you Go through it like uh, like the slides say and make sure you understand all the things before you append your signature. So I'll hand over to our panelists to make their final notes before we round up. Yep, Thomas, you go first. Okay, thank you. I think hey, Thomas and Yes. Hey, okay. Thomas and Okay, okay, sorry, I had our internet issues. But um, no, thank sorry. you for the session. Uh, it is uh, productive and I indeed have learned um, a lot concerning investment and insurance. But uh, one place I didn't understand is when you are saying like, um, when you fail to pay premiums, uh, there is usually a policy termination. So I'm trying to imagine I've been paying premium all along and then uh, this time things are not working as expected. So after termination of the premium of the policy, will the company like um, pay me back what I did the previous premiums? Okay, thank you very much, Zach. You know, the insurance company is always, it's always praying that you default and they will take your money. It's a fact. So once you have stopped paying premiums, some of them, it will be in the clause that uh, if you are not able to pay premiums con uh, consecutively for like three times, you have lost it, you understand? Or even... If it's a, it's, a, it's a cash back, like you want to uh, say, it's a cash back for up to, say, three years, and then you pay up to two and a half years, my friend, you will not get anything. Hardly will you get it. Hardly will you get it. So uh, insurance policies are very inevitable and very important, but you have to approach it very, very, very critical and very uh, much dedicated. Otherwise, you end up not getting anything. It have happened to a lot of people. And even sometimes people are doing it, they say, okay, cancel it so that you don't need that it. Because mostly, they always target these uh, civil servants, people who receive a, a monthly, and then they will do a standing order on your uh, pay slip. So anytime money uh, hits your bank account, they will deduct it before you can even have access to. So you go and tell them that uh, I'm no more interested in the policy, just cut it off. I don't want anything to do with you. But still, they'll be deducting. They'll say they are system, they are system, they are system. 